Let's make a consider the probability space made up of flipping three coins in a row. So we have elements of the space are heads, heads, heads. That's all three coins are heads. Then heads, head, tails. That's first I flip a head, then a head, then a tail. And similarly, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads. Tail. You get the idea. There's a total of three two to the third possibilities because I have two choices for the first one, two choices for the second, two choices for the third. Multiply that together, that's two to the third. Now let's consider two events. The event A, which is the first coin flipped is a head, so that would be head, 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 tail, head, tail, tail, and head, tail, head. And a second event, which is that at least two of the coins flipped are heads, not mattering about the order. So that would be head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, head. So those are all the possibilities. So we see the probability of the first head is a head is one half. The probability of at least two heads is three eighths. That's done just by counting the number of elements there because there's a total of eight. And lastly, if we intersect A and B, there's only two elements in that. And because we see that A intersect B is the same as B intersect A, and that's just heads, head, tail, and heads, tail, head. All right, now, what if we know that we have B has happened, but we want to know what's the chance that addition A happens. This is written A vertical bar B and read the probability of A given that B happens. And it's defined as the probability of A B divided by the probability of B. And if we calculate that, that's 2 eighths divided by 3 eighths or 2 thirds. And this makes sense. If we just look at B, 2 out of 3 of the elements in B also satisfy A. So if we know that we're already in the set B, the chance of A happening is exactly 2 thirds. Similarly, if we know that A has already happened, the probability of B given A would be just one half. That's two eighths over four eighths. Or if we look in the set B, A, we already know we're in the set A. That's these four possibilities. And then which of them also satisfy B? Well, there are two of them, the ones that I've just underlined, that one and that one, because that's the ones that have both two heads and have a heads first, which is the probability of B, given that we already know that we're in the set where there's a head first. All right, now related to this is the idea of independence. So two events A and B are independent if somehow knowing that one happens tells you nothing about whether the second one happens. In particular, the probability of A given that B happened already is just A. That means that knowing that B happened doesn't tell you anything, doesn't change the probability of A happening. And symmetrically, this is the probability of B given A is just the probability of B. And if we write out the definition, we see, we see we can rewrite this as the probability of both A and B happening is just the product of the probability of A times the probability of B. And similarly, if we start from the first one, that's the probability of A and B happening is, again, just the probability of A and the probability of B. So we see that these relationships are symmetric. Now, this one I've just boxed is usually the definition that's given because it doesn't require that A and B are not zero. It makes sense even if A or B have probability zero. But this definition that I'm running out right now is somehow a lot more intuitive. It says that the probability of A happening given that we know B already happened is just the probability of A happening. That is to say, knowing that B already happened in no way helps us, gives us any information about whether A happened. And while this definition requires that we know that B has, doesn't have zero probability, it's a little bit more intuitive than the product definition.